Hello! So we're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator again and we're looking this evening at the PA30 Twinkie. So this has just been released today as far as I'm aware. It's made by a developer called Shrike Simulations or ShrikeSims.com you can find them on the internet. Now they appear to be a subdivision of Milviz or Blackbird Simulations so it's all getting a bit confusing with the various names of the company because I'm pretty sure it's all the same company but anyway it would appear reading the text and you can see down here Shrike's mission is to offer affordable quality jump in and fly aircraft to offer maximum enjoyment without breaking the bank so it would appear this is Milviz taking on Carinado at their own game so this is the PA30 and we're going to go and take it for a fly. If we go and have a quick look at the map, we are at Kern Valley L05 in Southern California. So it's a nice little place to go testing aeroplanes. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to go and change the weather slightly. I'm going to take it off of live weather and put it on a few clouds just so we've got some texture in the sky around us. Okay. So, you can see the aeroplane is modelled really nicely. And reading about the kind of the mission statement of Shrike Simulations, everything you see in this aeroplane will be a stock piece of hardware in the simulator. So, they are not going to do anything special. Okay? So, there's no tablets, there's no cleverness, there's no. It's all stock hardware that comes with the simulator. Okay. So let's go and get rid of the yokes. It's interesting there that you can only remove both yokes at once. So maybe that is one of the concessions. Who knows? So first things first, let's go and look down on the floor. It's really nicely modelled, I have to say. So we'll go and put that to main on the left tank and main on the right tank. We'll go and jump back in the pilot's seat. And then we'll go and turn on the master power we will go and put the mixture to rich on both engines and then down here we'll go and put the rotating beacon lights on to warn people we're about to go and start the engines we'll turn on the fuel pumps on both sides we'll turn on all of the magnetos and then we will hold but we'll just crack the throttles open a little bit and we'll hold the right engine open we have a right engine, you can see the gyro section responding there, and then we go left engine, there goes the left engine, and the engine is started, so we should be able to come off the fuel pumps now. We're going to put our position lights on, we'll turn on the radio master switch, and we'll turn on the generators. So we're just waiting for the GPS to fire up and the transponder. Transponder's on, which is a bit strange. Normally I thought they started in standby mode. Just waiting for the GPS. So we've got a GNS 530 and a GNS 430, one stacked above the other. We've got uh, the audio stack from Bending. Uh, Bendix, sorry. Okay, so we'll just OK the GPS to go capture the satellites. We've got heater controls, we've got cal flaps. It's going to be fun. So I've not actually flown it yet. I've had a quick look at it to figure out how to start the engines, but that's all I've done. So we'll see how we get on with actually flying it. So if we go and look outside... Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Let's see if we open the engines up a little bit on, on the parking brakes. doesn't move around much on the suspension does it? But it may just be because it's a big heavy lump. <laughs> okay let's go and see what the flaps travel time is like so if I go back to zero and then back down so we shouldn't need flaps to take off but seeing as it is a big heavy lump maybe we will use them. Okay 
So calibrate the altimeter. Looks like it's fine. Landing lights to on. Everything else is good as far as I can see. Okay, so put the yoke back in place and let's take it for a flight and see how we get on, shall we? So come off the parking brake. Yeah, it's a big heavy lump. It takes a lot of power just to get it rolling. So it's going to taxi out onto the runway, so I think we're going to need the whole runway. So we're not going to play any silly games. It's a lovely looking aeroplane. So we're going to taxi straight across the runway here. Go out to the taxiway on the far side and then turn left. Then we get a nice climb out over the lake. So we are just north of Lake Isabel, which is east of the coast. We're directly north of Santa Barbara as well, just to give you some idea. If we go and have a quick look while we're taxiing, hopefully we won't end up in the dirt. So we've got San or Los Angeles directly south of us, sorry, Santa Barbara over to the southwest. And um, I told you we'd end up on the dirt, didn't I? At a sixth sense, then I needed to look back. But just to giving you some idea of where we are. Okay. Just roll onto the wrong way. So the, I think the whole point of Shrike is to make some cheaper aeroplanes where they're not going to be as high fidelity. So it's kind of, like I said, it's very much in the, the style of Carinado. So coming through 80 knots, I'm going to keep going 90 knots and rotate. We get a lot of back stick. It's not wanting to come off the ground. It is now. So it's very nose heavy. So gear up. I have to give it a lot of back stick. Now, it's interesting, it's got a flying tail. So let's go and remove the flaps. So, if we look overhead, there is this um, trim. So I'm just going to see, once I've got it trimmed down... Yeah, we need a, a lot of nose-up trim. And we're going absolutely full throttle at the moment. Let's have a look at the manifold pressure. I mean, I realise that the whole point is this isn't the most realistic thing ever. But you can see we're absolutely maxed out on RPM. The manifold pressure isn't that high. It seems very, very docile on the elevators to the point of it not being realistic at all. Which is a shame because it looks fantastic. But it may be they've done this on purpose to dumb it down so people who maybe are not so experienced would have a good chance of flying it. Because it is literally it's like there's a huge damper on the on the elevator. You can see if I look, it's not really moving. Not as much as you might imagine with massive throws like that. Same with roll really. That's a lot of throw, isn't it, for that amount of roll rate? So it's it's like it's damped down. 
but that may be to make it easier for newcomers to fly it maybe. It's just something to be aware of I guess. So with that in mind let's go out over the lake and do a stall and see how it behaves. See if it will stall. I mean, it may be that the real aeroplane behaves exactly like this, and this is wonderfully accurate. Do a steep turn here to get back over the lake. OK, so we're going to pull the engines back. doesn't want to come back, look, without the gear down. Oh my word, it wants nearly 50% throttle. So let's try a powered stall then, so we don't have to put up with a buzzer for ages. So we're going to put the nose up, watch the airspeed fall off. Hold the attitude. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There's the stall warning. And it falls in a straight line. So I have a feeling they have just dumbed down the flight model. If I let go of the stick now, look, it's going to go into the ground like a dart. And we're going to overspeed if we're not careful. It's very odd. I mean, I completely get it. Maybe they have manipulated it so it's easy to fly. Easy to control. Right, let's go back in towards the airfield. Should we land from the, the lake end? So... Need to lose some airspeed. So we'll go and put the gear down that should introduce some drag. And it appears to be doing so. There's the airfield. Okay, flaps down. Going to be mindful of speed. It's a big heavy twin, so we'll stay up around 95, 90, or above 90 knots at least, and see how we get on with the approach. It just doesn't have that high fidelity feel in the flight model that the other Milvis aircraft have. back up. We'll taxi back round and come back in. So I guess it's worth pointing out there's lots of things that are clickable and they make differences to the sound which is quite good. So the you know things like the shades everything works it's just that flight model's a bit odd. There's another small bugbear of mine, 
that's common of lots of aeroplanes in the simulator actually. Watch the animation of the propeller boss, of the nose boss, sorry. I hate that. Now, Asobo have gone out of their way to solve this with their own aircraft. So if you go and look at things like the Caravan or the King Air, they've absolutely solved how to do that. But nobody else seems to have. And they have this strange, blurry, repeating animation. Now I've shown you that, you're going to see it in all the other aeroplanes and curse me, probably. Okay, so while we're coming back in, we're going to turn the landing lights off. And come and park back up. Why is there a van parked in my parking spot? Okay, parking brake on. Pull the mixture back. Sounds are great. Turn the max off. Turn the beacon lights and the position lights off. Turn the generators off. Turn the radios off. Turn the master switch off. So have they modelled doors? Yes, they have. Quite bizarrely, this is quite amusing, they're letting you um, have whatever passengers you like in the aeroplane. Also, <laughs> you can fold the seat down, which miraculously makes the... Uh, the passenger disappear. You can't go through the doors though, there's clipping at the edge of the um, fuselage, which is a bit of a shame. But it's a, it's a nice new model aeroplane, it's just that flight model is really old. Okay, and they've got the sounds obviously with the engines cooling, which is really lovely. And look at that, the static nose bosses look amazing. It's just a shame they hadn't done anything with the, the animations, really. But it's a low-cost aeroplane. I should stop complaining and nitpicking, really, because it looks great. And for most people, it'll be fine. So that was the PA-30. The, what was it called again? The Twinkie from Shrike. So you can go to shrikesims.com and get it for about $18. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you again soon.